Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Wonder Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at the Great Library. So the Great Library is a wonder that is unlocked with the Recorded History technology. This does make it a classical era wonder. Uh, recorded History is fairly easy to boost. All that you have to do to get the Eureka for Recorded History is construct two campus districts, which is fairly easy to do. Uh, most of the time this will happen just naturally in any game, especially if you're going for a science victory in a game. You'll probably get this on its own. If you're not going particularly for just any uh, any science-focused game, you might not get the two campuses down before getting recorded history. Um, but if you really want to boost it, you can fairly easily because those requirements are very simple to fulfill. Uh, once you've uh, researched recorded history, you will uh, be able to place down the Great Library. And the building requirements for placing the Great Library are that it must be on a flatland tile. Um, that flatland tile must also be adjacent to a campus, and that campus must have a library inside of it. These building requirements, uh, much like with the the ease of boosting recorded history, the building requirements are very easy to fulfill as well, because in almost all of your games you'll probably have a campus that has a at least one flatland tile next to it, and it is very easy to get a library built in that campus, especially since you are, you are able to construct libraries before you are able to construct the Great Library, so by the time you get to recorded history you'll probably have at least one campus with a library, and thus the building requirements are fairly easy to fulfill. Um, the Great Library does have a production cost of 400 production, which is fairly standard for the Classical Era Wonders. I believe that that's the same as the Colosseum that we talked about last time. So you can expect the usual, you know, around 20, 20 to 30 turns, you know, maybe maybe a little bit less if you have really good production, and maybe a little bit more if you have really poor production in your city, but in general around 20 turns to construct the Great Library. And once you place down the Great Library, you will be able to get the bonuses that it provides, so those bonuses are as follows. It will provide plus two science per turn to the city it is constructed in. You will gain plus one great scientist and great writer point per turn. Um, if you if you don't have rise and fall, this is only one great scientist point per turn. You don't get the great writer point as well. Um, it will boost all ancient and classical era techs as well. And you will get a random tech boost whenever another player recruits a great scientist. I believe that that one is also a uh, rise and fall only one. Um, it, if So if you don't have rise and fall, you just won't get any tech boost when other people recruit great scientists. Um, in addition to this, I didn't put it on the screen here just because I ran out of space. But you do get plus two uh, slots for great great works of writing. So the bonuses from the Great Library are honestly a bit underwhelming um, <laughs> for it being such a science focused wonder only to get two science per turn out of that that is that is just like disgraceful. I'm pretty sure that's equal to a library if not less. Um, I don't remember just because it has been a little bit um, since I've really paid attention to yields and all that stuff but uh, I believe that that is less than the science that you get from a library or equal to it so for you know a lot more production you get the same benefit of science per turn which is just really very poor value. Um, you do get the one great scientist and great writer point per turn, which um, I guess that's okay, but once again, if you compare this to just a regular library, you get one great scientist point for, per turn from a regular library as well, so that's pretty underwhelming. Uh, the great writer point is, I guess, decent, but if you're going to build a great library, you're probably not looking to do it for cultural reasons, you're probably looking to do it for science reasons. Um, boosting all ancient and classical era texts, that sounds really good on paper, but then you take into account the fact that once again, if you're going for the Great Library, it's, you're probably going to be building it for scientific reasons, and you're probably going to have most, if not all, of the ancient uh, and classical texts already researched or boosted, um, especially considering the fact that all of those texts have pretty simple Eurekas anyways, so it is very easy to boost all of those texts on their own, so getting the boost to them without having to actually get the Eureka isn't that much of a change from what you normally would get, so that is very underwhelming, um, and as I mentioned, not, not, not to mention the fact that you're probably going to be already a little bit ahead in science because you'll probably be focusing science if you're going for the Great Library. Um, so you probably will already have most of those texts researched anyways by the time you build the Great Library. So that is, it's, it's decent on paper but not that great in practice. And the fact that you receive a random tech boost when another, when another player recruits a great scientist, once again, is one of those things that sounds really good on paper, but in practice doesn't end up being that great, because um, what happens is that if you are going for a very prominent science game, chances are that you are going to be the one that's recruiting most of the great scientists, so you're not even going to be getting those boosts when other people re re uh, recruit great scientists. Not to mention the fact that... Um, you only get one Eureka from it, so they're going to be recruiting a great scientist, and then you'll get one Eureka. So if you're a prominent science player in the game, then maybe uh, someone's, someone else is going to recruit a great scientist, you know, every, I don't know, 50 or so turns. So you're going to get one Eureka every 50 or so turns, which is really just not that much of a benefit. So the big thing here is that if you're going for a science game, the Great Library is a very poor value, and you don't get very much out of it. 
you're not going for a science game though, then it actually can be helpful, which is kind of kind of funky, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But without further ado, let's move on and rate the Great Library. As some of you may already know, I give each wonder a rating, and it's just kind of an overall rating to judge its uh, overall effectiveness on a 1 to 5 scale, with 1 being terrible and 5 being outstanding. I also go over some of the use cases that the wonder is good in, and reasons why you would want to build the wonder. I also give each wonder a difficulty and a consistency rating, um, of which that is on the same 1 to 5 scale as the rating, as being 1 is the least difficult slash least consistent, and 5 is the most difficult slash most consistent. Um, for the difficulty rating, I do assume D difficulty because that's what these guides are geared towards and that's really just what I play on so that's what I have the the most experience with so without further ado let's go ahead and let's rate the great library so for the overall rating for the great library I think it deserves a two it's really it's not very good of a wonder. I think it was much better of a wonder back in Civ 5 than it is in Civ 6, and that's just because its bonuses are really just underwhelming, and it kind of has a conflict of interest in what it uh, wants to do. So, generally, you would expect the Great Library to be a very good science wonder, but unfortunately, it's kind of pointless as a science wonder, because it's very poor value, considering that a library will, uh, just like a library by itself, will give you most of the benefits of the Great Library, except it's way, way, way cheaper, and you can build multiple of them in, in uh, different cities with different campuses. So um, from a value standpoint, it is a very poor wonder for science. And then if you are not going for a science victory, then, you know, maybe, or you're not focusing on science, then the great wonder, the, the great wonder, the great library can actually be decent because then those bonuses are a little bit more impactful and you might actually make use of the extra Eurekas that you get from it. Um, so just because of that conflict of interest, I don't think that the great uh, library is very outstanding and that's why I think it deserves it too. It does still have some use cases though, and we will talk about those right now. So, one of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head that really works well, and it's, it's a way that I've used the Great Library before, is to help you catch up in science. And this is most notable whenever you're focusing on culture in the early game. So, since you um, research recorded history as a civic, that means that if you're farther ahead in culture, then you'll get to that civic first. So if you, say, go on in the early game and focus on your culture game, you get a lot of culture output, not a lot of science output. That means you'll probably get to recorded history fairly quickly. And if you're able to get to recorded history fairly quickly, then you can place down the Great Library before other people. You have a higher chance of getting it, and that can kind of help you keep up um, in science, which you were probably neglecting if you were focusing so much on culture. So um, that is one of the ways that I think the Great Library can be very useful, especially for culture victory. Um, just because you get that great writer point as well, you get two slots for great uh, works of writing, so if you're going for a culture victory and you've neglected science in the early game, I think that the Great Library is the wonder to get to help you catch up in science. The only other use case that I could really think about for the Great Library is to further secure your lead, so just to kind of rub it in people's faces that you are the top dog in science and you can do whatever you want, um, that would be a reason to get the Great Library because it does give you, you know, a little bit more yields and you know, a few extra boosts and a, a few more Great Scientist points per turn. Um, so it is a very poor value, but if you really are that far ahead already, then you can use the Great Library to just kind of further secure your scientific lead and make it so that even if other people are trying to catch up, it's going to be more difficult because you're going to get Eurekas when they recruit Great Scientists and you're just going to have a little bit more science per turn, so that's the only other reason that I would consider going for the Great Library is just to kind of, you know, rub it in, just be like, I have the resources, um, like, I have enough resources to be able to build this terrible wonder, and it'll still help me out a little bit, but it kind of just helps further secure my own lead in the game. And for the Great Library's difficulty rating, I think that it deserves a 4. It is actually a fairly difficult wonder to uh, to compete with the AI for, because the AI seems to really like to build the, uh, the Great Library. I'm not really sure why, but it's just one of those things that the AI tends to build it in pretty much every game, and if you're too slow towards getting to recorded history, the AI will almost certainly beat you to it. So it is a little bit difficult to get. It's definitely not as difficult as some of the early game wonders that we've talked about uh, in this series so far, but it is still a bit of a challenge to get the Great Library in some games, and this does vary per game. Um, I'm not really sure why, it's just kind of the, the tendency of the AI in Civ 6 that sometimes it really likes certain wonders, sometimes it really doesn't. Um, but I find more often than not, the AI does tend to build the Great Library, so that is why I think it deserves the 4 difficulty rating. 
And for its consistency rating, I think it also deserves a 4. Um, it is a very consistent wonder. You do get pretty much the same bonuses every single game. Um, the only kind of catch here is that although it is consistent, that doesn't mean it's good because its uh, its bonuses are consistently underwhelming as well. So um, you will pretty much get most of the same bonuses from the Great Library no matter what game you build it in. So it is very consistent in that regard. But unfortunately, those bonuses are not very good. So it is also consistently underwhelming in pretty much every single game. So um, just because of that reason, I think it deserves a 4 because you're going to be pretty much getting you're getting what you expect with the Great Library in every single game. So thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for more Civilization VI content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.